Are you a business owner looking for real advice and input? You're in the right place. From concept to launch to growth, funding and beyond. Welcome to Startup Hustle with your hosts. One once sold a business for $150 million. The other, the author of Million Dollar Bedroom. Here are your hosts of Startup Hustle, Matt DeCourcy and Matt Watson. And we're back. Another episode of Startup Hustle. Matt DeCourcy here with Andy Talbert, who will be sitting in for Matt Watson today. Hello, Andy. Good to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you in. We're going to have an interesting conversation today. We've got to definitely have a first here on the Startup <laughs> Hustle. We are going to, uh, in, our, in our ever, never dying wish to bring our listeners the most interesting entrepreneurs we can find. I was searching and seeking <laughs> something new and I came across Snow Pops and you are the co-founder of snowpops.co, an adult beverage popsicle. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And we're going to get all into that. Oh, can't wait. So first off, so you guys know, we're recording this. It's 1040 AM and I am not on Snow Pops, but it wasn't because I was unwilling. <laughs> um, we and, wanted to get through the interview Andy first. didn't want to bring me any. Yeah. I, afterwards, afterwards. That's your reward for completing the okay. successful podcast. All right, podcast. I'm down with that. I do that with my kids. <laughs> my kids are, you know, three and five. So yeah. like... I mean, and it is it is fair to say that on many days, if they do something, they will get a popsicle as long as they eat it outside. There you go. It's, it's the dessert of the adult beverage so, category. So, well, I guess I should let everyone know that this episode of Startup Hustle is brought to you by Fullscale.io and Snowpops.co. You can be the co the co sponsor. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah so uh, <laughs> I like it when our our guests are interactive. You can go to Snowpops.co. Or go check them out on the gram at, at snowpops.co, which I am currently following you and looking at snowpops. Exactly. These, following us back. We already followed you first. I know. So. Sorry for the, <laughs> the, the lack of inclusion. But by the see, you didn't have to mention that because I could have been following you the whole time because by the time this comes awesome. out, I will have been following you for That's at least good. two weeks. <laughs> so, man, these things look tasty. Um, I guess we could start with, I mean... Andy, what makes you want to, how do you start an adult beverage popsicle business? I have to feel like this has to do with a little like garage level chemistry or like, or frat house chemistry or something. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I would like to think uh, it's a little bit better than frat house chemistry, but uh, definitely some chemistry well, involved. Well, things evolve, regard. things evolve. Yeah, things, things do, things evolve. So, so what's yeah. the backstory uh, here? Pr probably, so a decade ago, uh, I'm in corporate world, uh, working at Hallmark Cards just down the street and uh, finishing up my MBA at uh, UMKC. Um, also in Kansas City here, and uh, had a couple a couple folks that I, I kind of realized we wanted to do a business together at some point, and we ended up getting into the cocktail business. We ended up initially getting into the cocktail business through brick and mortar, uh, and then after a few years, no, we well, realized... Back, back up, explain yeah. that. When you said in the cocktail business through brick so, and mortar... So actually like, like uh, cocktail bars. Okay. So actually going in and doing like the cocktail bar thing, like okay. i.e. brick and mortar, we're going to make all these special uh, frozen, frozen cocktails, so think slushies, but you know, trying to elevate them. Uh, you know, I'd been following kind of the cocktail scene in New York, all the stuff that was happening and, you know, bringing back all these unique spirits, unique flavor mm -hmm. profiles, et cetera. The craft beverage business. The craft is, beverage has, business. Yes. It's been, it's been coming I'm, up. I'm a bit yeah. of a nerd about that. Yeah. yeah well, that regard. It, you know, if you, so I'm 44 and, um, went 20 years ago, I used to work at a bar and in, yep. in, in Colorado and that's, and I feel that's when like the craft beers really started popping and absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's obviously everywhere. It's a big thing now. So, it is. so did the, the brick and mortar was, did that come and go? Uh, it did, but I mean, it, it took a few years. I mean, we sure. had three locations, uh, ran it for about six years. Uh, when Snow Pop started to kind of take off, uh, it made it made sense to not be putting focus and energy there, obviously, and to, to shift that over. Uh, I think, you know, I'm I'm probably, first and foremost, a marketer and a brand person. So I, v I very much think in that, that realm of, of how you can build something that has uh, a national scale to it. Uh, brick and mortar is really hard to scale. You know, building yeah. a product that you can have sold at a few thousand locations that you're not paying the employees, you're not paying the rent, you're not paying the light bill. You're just basically making product and shipping it and then supporting it through marketing and sales efforts. D a different set of difference. challenges now, but in, set for in, sure. in your, in your uh, industry, there, this is, it's crowded. It is. I mean, you're yeah. competing with some of your competition is like big fancy companies with yeah, and I mean, there's like a lot of Anheuser Busch <laughs> or like you know people that we have you know 
yeah, recognized as being around for a thousand years. And the there reason that they're, open but it's tough to compete with them because they also have the distributorship and they've got the supply chain and like. Yeah, alcohol is a little bit interesting, so ha happy to, to delve in. But what makes it unique is it's highly regulated. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, there is there is kind of nationally a three-tiered system. So just very briefly, the idea being you can make alcohol, you can distribute alcohol, or you can ultimately sell it like a retailer. That could be a convenience store, grocery store, whatever, or it could be a bar or a restaurant. Uh, the, the government frowns strongly upon you playing at more than one of those levels. So really? if you have ownership in one of the three tiers you are, except in very special cases, prohibited from having ownership in the other tiers. So an example locally here, you have uh, Lift, what is it, Lifted Spirits? Yep. And they, now they, they make their own liquor, but they also yes. have a place that they sell it. And they can sell it on premise. Okay, but, but they, they don't they would sell have it other places? Difficulty selling it. Well, they, and they can sell it through distribution, and they can sell it through their own premise, but they couldn't go and start 25 places and sell it themselves that wasn't where they were actually producing it at. Hmm. So okay. what's, yeah. what's the reasoning for that? Uh, it, it came out of kind of, I think it's a legacy from prohibition. Uh, you know, when you came out of pre-prohibition period of time, you had basically supply chain control. You had the, the guys who were making the whiskey or the beer own the bars or the pubs or mm. the, the whatever. And uh, coming out of prohibition, they wanted to break up the power dynamic. That's the idea. I see. Uh, the, the real I answer mean, nothing's is better than carrying over things that were yeah, not yeah, even yeah, effective a hundred years ago. Precisely, yeah. precisely. There's yeah. a lot of legacy laws that okay. ultimately dictate Those how those are hard to sold. overturn, though. Like you look at like uh, I don't even try. <laughs> well, right. Well, because you, <laughs> so. well, uh, you talk about will your voice be heard? Like you don't. I mean. Let's be realistic. Like, yeah. I mean, we don't have a voice there. We would like to think we do, but... Like, pragmatically, yeah. you have to kind of say, this is the landscape. I didn't create it. This okay. is the rule set, and you have to kind of go with it. So, there again, three tiers. Uh, the idea being they wanted to kind of break it up. Really, from a, a, a true answer, it's just a taxation mechanism. And so, that's, there's so that's three what, groups that's that why after. there's not like, an, uh, like a Coors Light bar. Precisely. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. And and it's, and I never they, knew that. I never there, even thought about And if about there that. is a Coors Light bar somewhere, hypothetically, it's licensed. They're licensing the name. They yeah. can't actually own it themselves. Okay. They would have to have another operator owning it and so running it. So when you're out at, at Royal Stadium at the K and you have like the Blue Moon thing there that's just like it's a license of a like name a license. effectively yeah they couldn't they okay. couldn't truly own it so yeah it, but that it could be the operators. distributor or someone like that does it or who well knows? in theory distributors are just supposed to be passed through so distributors that middle tier so effectively when i when i you know, we make snow pops for example okay so snow pops then are when we sell into a state we bring on a new state so we just brought on georgia a few weeks ago so we're selling to georgia i'm selling to the distributor in georgia that's my sole customer and then the distributor in Georgia has the rights to sell out of their warehouse all the snow pops in the state of Georgia. Do you so have to make them in Georgia? No. So we okay. make everything in Missouri. So just just south of, isn't, of Kansas. Well, City. Isn't that something though that's like part of the regulation? Don't you have it's transporting alcohol across state lines? Isn't yeah. That sometimes it, it's regulated. I mean, okay. you definitely you're taxed. You have to kind of you know acknowledge it. It all has to be tracked. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork and compliance that goes into the industry because it is more more regulated. Than Sounds super selling fun. selling toothbrushes. Yeah. So well, it, it's 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 uh, it's difficult. But then that's part of I think why you know we've been in the game now. We've had snow pops for this is our third year, but you know been working on it for like 10 <laughs> yeah, most. Right. so so you and have to nine of learn the, seven of those were heavily testing the product uh, heavily testing yourself, the product right? uh, actually running running some retail locations you know with the team uh you know we had we had employees and everything that went into that uh you know snow pops is really i think kind of uh for me on the entrepreneurial side of things an evolution of trying to kind of create uh, a business that minimizes risk but also you know has like kind of a bigger upside right so now, now you currently have distribution in nine states correct yeah and we'll have we'll have 15 by next spring that's so, a lot I mean, um, that's a lot it's a high growth space you know we're doing you know five five x revenue every year uh from the previous year at least uh it, and it's very much the intent is to grow it to a certain place where um we're annoying in the space and then someone acquires us <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, congratulations yeah, if that it, happens. It, I mean, it, it's built to sell. Let's put yeah, it that sure, way. Yeah, sure, sure. And and that's I mean, but that's exactly what the bigger brands want. It they is. don't they don't want to necessarily do all the hard work up front. They yeah. rather find something that already works and you know like I mean, who cares? If you cash a giant check, I don't think you're probably going to cry about it. No, no, I'm, I'm yeah. not. Uh, it, you know, I think there are the, the times that you're trying to build a legacy company and the times mm -hmm. that you're trying to build a company that just creates value for yourself and your shareholders and your partners and, and that go, goes into that. And I think, you know, this is one of those ones that uh, it'll be a win, but I don't I don't need it to be a, a win that I run for 30 years in any sure. way. Um, well, I you think mentioned earlier you talked about building a brand. Yeah. And, you know, the, the interesting thing about 
about branding, whether it's your personal brand or your product brand, is there's an intangible value on brand. Absolutely. I mean, obviously you have sales, like you're selling over a million dollars a year snow pops right now, and it sounds like that's growing really quickly, but you know, what's the brand value worth? I mean, first off, great right. name. That's a great oh, name. I mean, yeah. it's like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, it, no, it's so many, so many people would try to be overly clever. Yeah. You know, and you see some of the beverages, it's like, you know, that, but you kind of have an, you kind of have a little bit of a, of a uphill climb there. You know, I could see someone yeah. say, Hey man, do you carry snow pops? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We got them. You want to be the category, right? right. You right, want right. to be the category. So how many other people are in this, in this category? Uh, there are a few players. They're mostly regional. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, on the national level, are they you like have, you guys? I mean, are they kind? Uh, are they craftish? I think they're less craftish and probably more. And, and we we play the you know kind of fine line between craft but also accessible. I mean, our, our price point at retail is two dollars. So per unit per, per unit. Okay. Yeah. So that's it's, reasonable. It seems to be, you know, we, we, we like it. And I think, you know, it allows for, allows for volume. I kind of uh, always frame it as we're kind of the candy bar of the liquor store. You know, you show up and you've got your bottle of vodka and your case of beer. And you're not going to put either of those back. You're still going to buy those for your, for your event or whatever you're going to be doing. But you're also going to throw a few snow pops kind of at the point of sale in the cart. And, you know, if you're a retailer, you love that because it actually, you know, incrementally, you know, increases the, 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 the size of the shopping basket for, for them, which is good. Uh, and it's a high margin item for them as well. So, so are these? Th- uh, f- so one thing with with frozen is that can also spell seasonal. Yeah. Is that does that is that something that is that you, do it, initially you ha- it was a challenge? Yeah, absolutely. Is it still? Uh, I- I- less and less because we've intentionally been growing south and east. That's so, warmer yeah. there. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, getting getting Georgia, you know, what your what your season in Georgia is. You know, when we brought on that uh, that distributor specifically. They were excited about it this fall, and I was like, oh, I, th- I thought they might wait till next spring, but they didn't. They're like, no, SEC football, man. Like, SEC sure. football, parking lots, tailgates. I can see that. You know, this is, this is perfect product this for is, that. This is, like a, <laughs> a, this is like an improvement on the Jello shot in some ways. Significantly, like, yeah. The Jello shot is yeah. what it is, but it's not cool. It's not. Now, one of the yeah. things, and this is what I was going to bring up. So, so uh, if you're listening, go to, uh, go to Instagram and go to snowpops.co. You can actually just search Snow Pops and it'll come up first. But your brand, the, the packaging looks great. It's great. Um, yeah. One of the things, and by the way, I love these pictures of like people just like clearly having fun. <laughs> like this kind of like hot chick talking on her phone, like eating a Snow Pop. And you don't, you yeah. only see half her face. So, which is fine. Cause, it's a lifestyle brand. Well, it's the, yeah, I mean, <laughs> totally. Like it's, she's clearly enjoying everything because of the snow pop but as i scroll down there's one thing not for kids not for kids correct. so that's got to be a little yeah. bit of a challenge so and for lack of comparables so you know uh, as as cannabis recreationally has become legal yeah. they've had an issue with that because you know they like to build it into things that look like candy yeah like gummies yep and you know kids see that well, if my kids see gummies they're going to probably eat them and i don't i don't think them eating a handful of cannabis uh, infused yeah. gummies well i don't i don't know how that would go but i don't want to find out you definitely would win it i'm going to save that for their <laughs> for their yeah <laughs> so so is that something that because here's the thing is like i have i have uh you know like otter pops mm-hmm. in my freezer yeah i mean i, Keep I the may or, may, the I may, or may not have had one in the last 24 <laughs> hours i'm supposed to be on the keto diet I yeah, mean, they're, they're not keto friendly. Can't, can't help you on that. But so part of that, you know, so like, you know, if you threw some of these, is, is this an issue? Like the not for uh, kids part? So on the branding side, we go playful with it. That's why it says really big, not for kids. Yeah. And uh, we even have a bunch of sub taglines to that. So our our, uh, our agency that did all the creative for us and has won actually awards on it is uh, Signal Theory, which is a great agency here in Kansas City. Is that it's who so designed the packaging and stuff? Yeah, it looks absolutely. good. It looks yeah. good. No, they, did, they did a fantastic yeah. job. They actually, I think, won best packaging last year at the, uh, the, the local ad awards for that. And, uh, but yeah, the, I mean, the, the challenge was this, you know, you're sitting there, you're going to make a brand, you want it to be playful, you want it to be nostalgic, you want it to be all this stuff. But then at the end of the day, you also are in a category that, you know, you have non-alcoholic versions that kids are the yeah. main consumers of. So, uh, I think at one point I was, I was having a design meeting with, uh, some of the, some of the art people and everything. And I was like, oh yeah, we could use like cute animals, like penguins and things like that. And maybe not. at one point they stopped me and they're like, cool. So you want to be like the next Joe Camel. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. No, no, no cute animals. Yeah, that's I mean, out. He did so. all, they did all right with that for a while. <laughs> Until every state attorney general started coming after him. So, yes. Uh, yeah. So I, I, and I see that, you know, once again on your Instagram. Now, we have an office, in, Full Scale is an office in the Philippines. And uh-huh. we have developed a very strong love for the mango. Yeah. 
and I didn't even realize there were two kinds of mangoes. So you have the orange mango, which is a ripe one, and you you let her, the time is ripe, and you're spot on because you you're using the orange mango. I don't even know if you did that on purpose. I can't take credit for it, but I will take credit for it. Because the so. green the green mango is the yeah. not ripe one. It's still edible and it's sour. Yeah, because it hasn't like sweetened yet. And it's the, a little and sweeter. So, yeah. So you kind of go one way or the other. Like yeah. you, So mango shakes, frozen mango shakes. Absolutely. Basically, mango ice, blend it, drink it. Delicious. Yep. I'm talking like fresh fruit, like straight off the tree. Great stuff. So the mango. Um, we've, we've got blueberry in here. Yeah, blueberry acai, and then I think I said that right. Acai. I don't even know. Yeah, 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 I look so. at A C A C A I. Yeah, I would say a kai because <laughs> yeah, I also blueberry kai for. I'm also one. Of, I'm also one of those people that that insists on pronouncing things like the true American way. There, there we go. There yeah, we go. Like there's a, there's a uh, an alt band called Bon Iver, and I, they are Bon <laughs> Iver. When I Bon-iver. talk about it, yeah, my wife gets so pissed about that. She's like, that's not how you say it. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure that means beautiful river in French, it's and that's not, I don't very know. Very possible. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 she told me that, too, but <laughs> tried to play it off. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so we've got cranberry and lime. Yeah, it's like a Cosmo. Blueberry, uh, whatever you want to have. Mango. <laughs> Those are the three flavors. You got that's them. it? That's all three? Yep, that's all three. We'll, okay. we'll launch some new flavors uh, in 2020, but those hey, three why, are great. Why complicate it? Yeah, no, they've, they've done really well. Uh, we intentionally kind of came out with flavors that were a little bit different than what you're seeing. I mean, you know, I think if you look at some of the competitors, they have, you know, flavors like purple and, <laughs> you know, purple and red and things like that. So very simplistic, very much more like Kool-Aid-y. I was um, just thinking Kool-Aid because yeah. it's funny. We want us to be more, it's more of a cocktail. It's like, a if you ask someone cocktail. what flavor of Kool-Aid they want, they will <laughs> usually the name a color. Yeah. Not, and But that's yeah. just kind of the way it is. It is, yes, yes. So you, it, I think that's actually an interesting thing to talk about as you're building your brand and your product is it's easy to want to like maybe make like 50 flavors mm-hmm. or something insane. Like why not just be good at like three of them? Good at three of them. Get get distribution. Ultimately, right. get it on the shelves. You know, I mean, it, you know, in the end, you're not going to get a retailer to take 50 flavors anyway. They don't right. have room on the shelf. So I think <laughs> you know, we came out, and it isn't we, we, that we didn't test 50 flavors. It isn't that we don't have more in the pipeline. It's just let's let's launch with three, and let's actually get it to the place where you know there's a good volume of sales happening. We have good. I, you know, I, I'd rather have people asking us for new flavors than us pushing new flavors on sure. people. So. Sure. Well, that's just more stuff to develop and to keep up with. And like, it is. Yeah. I mean, keep it simple. Yeah. Like, no. and, and I think one of the things that I see, I don't know, the advice I pass on a lot to people with any business they're trying to start is like, get really good at like <laughs> two, one or two things before you yeah. try to be good at seven. Like, oh, great, and, yeah. and you, you have X amount of bandwidth, resources, capital, yep. any of that. And if you can't be good at one thing, how are you going to be good at six? Yeah, no, completely. All right. So when I go and buy these um, and, and uh, I can go get these at like a liquor store. Is that correct? Okay. Liquor stores, grocery stores, convenience stores. Uh, each state is different, though. So, like in Kansas, for example, you have to go to a liquor store because there are 800 liquor stores in Kansas that have kind of the exclusive rights to be able to sell alcohol there. If you go to Missouri and you're on the Missouri side, um, you can buy them at grocery stores, convenience stores, other places. So that has more to do with the state regulations. That's not our choice. It just you know, depending on the state, uh, depends on the distribution, what the rules are. So when I buy these, do they come in a box? Do they come in six? Do they come in 12? Do I buy 24 of them? The boxes come in 12, but the boxes actually from a merchandising point of view, the top basically rips off. And so a lot of times they'll be So you can buy two of them. You could buy two individual popsicles or you could buy a box of 12 or you could buy multiple boxes of 12. So it really just depends on kind of how the individual retailer chooses to merchandise it, but they have several different options there. Um, I like to go big. I'd get, I'd at least get a dozen. There you go. And and a lot of times we'll have people though who will try all three flavors, right? And then they'll pick kind of, uh, they'll have one that they gravitate towards and it's their favorite. And then they come back and they want to buy a whole box of that. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the idea is that it's easy to sample. It's a low cost of entry. There isn't like a, I don't want someone to sit there and think for 15 minutes about whether they want to try a snow pop. It's too much. I don't even want to know that. I don't even want to know that person. <laughs> I, know, so I don't like if that's you, you and you're listening, deeply. like, I don't even want you yeah. to listen to the show. Yeah. You just, you just like unsubscribe. Color, if you're the person it. that takes 15 <laughs> minutes to pick which three of the snow pops you want, I, you know, no, that's not fair. <laughs> um, okay. So with any business comes challenge. 
Absolutely. What were some of the challenges that you've run into in getting this to where it is now? Well, I mean, I think we talked earlier about the beverage industry. You know, I think, uh, you know, really identifying the opportunity. Is this something we want to do? Is this something we want to put our own capital and time and energy into? And, uh, you know, I look, I look at the beverage industry, I think, at a very macro level across what's taken place to what you referenced craft beer to what's taking place in wine, to what's taking place in coffee. I mean, coffee sure. is really one that I look at a lot and learn from in terms of the things that have happened there. And, and I think where we're at with craft cocktails, I think we are a subset of the craft cocktail movement. And specifically within that, we're a category called RTD, which is ready to drink, which is inclusive of some of the fastest growing brands in the country right now. So I think we got, our timing is correct. Our ability to scale really just comes back to the execution side of things. So it was really identifying the opportunity, first of all, and then legally figuring out how you do it, legally figuring out how you do manufacturing. I mean, I don't, I don't have a manufacturing or a chemi chemistry background. We have, we have good palates. We have the ability to taste things and say, that tastes good or that doesn't taste good, or I feel like there's a trend here that we could take advantage of. Um, I think, you know, we have a good eye for brand. We have a good eye for, you know, what, what would do well at the shelf and kind of understanding that. There's a lot of work that goes into that. But overall, it's still kind of putting all the pieces and parts together. And, and through me, I'm, I'm not a solopreneur. I've never done it. I've always had a team. I've always had people from grad school on where it's like, okay, cool. I always know I need someone who's better at operations than me. I always know that I need someone who's better at finance than me. And all those various elements. Well, that's elements. smart. Yeah. That's, I mean, we, I, gosh, I don't even, you know, this will probably be like episode 180 something. <laughs> and, and it's a recurring theme, you know, like find people that are, first off, find people that are smarter than you. Yeah and that do the things that you're not good at or the things you aren't interested in doing. Like if you're a sales and brand guy, find someone that's an operations person or like in your case, like I, I, there's probably someone on your team that's good at like logistics or paperwork or something because you've got, I mean. All that stuff, yeah. Compliance <laughs> crap. Like yeah. I am not good at that stuff. Well, yeah. I could do it. I'm per, per, certainly capable of filling out forms and, yeah. and filing stuff and keeping up with that. I just hate it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And so I think it, early on in a business, you do whatever you have to do. Yeah, for sure. Later on, you want to build out those capabilities where you can do right. what you do best. And uh, probably so, in both our cases, that's selling. So yeah. you're a co-founder. How many other founders are there? I've got two other co-founders with me, and then we have probably about a dozen investors as well who okay. come along for the ride. Well, that's good. Yeah. So what are your other co-founders? Like, what do they specialize in? Operations finance. Boom. <laughs> hey. so, there you I go. mean, that's, yeah. I, th those will always be, I mean, to, to my dying day, those will be the two things that I'll always have to be, have people who are stronger than I am around. Yeah, so, but I'm in the same way. Like yeah. our COO, who's on us, we're on our third company together at this point. He's yep. just like an operations master. Like yep. he, I mean, and he has a, a degree in finance. So, yep. you know, like, and you say finance, what does that mean? I mean, that it means like you have to deal with a lot of crap. There's yeah, a lot absolutely. to keep up with. And if you lose, if you, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you let, if you let loose of that fire hose while it's on and your business is actually on full tilt, yep. like, I mean, there's a lot like, yeah. I mean, full scale, we've got 170 employees all of a sudden. How, I, you know, it's like, I mean, like I said, if you let go of that fire hose, yeah, you got a lot of money in, a lot to, of money. You out. have to either turn it off and then grab it. Yep. Or you have to try to chase it down while it's whipping around and that, and, e and either suck. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of hard. Um, all right. So back to the product here. So each one of these, uh, you ha I have a note here that they are 6.7% alcohol. Correct. So does one serving, does one snow pop, does that represent the same? It'd be like a beer. Is it, I was going to say, is, yeah. about, is that about, or, or a beer. shot, or, yeah, I mean, it, or a glass of wine? Uh all probably pretty similar. One, one would probably serving, be a little bit more. One serving? One serving, yes. Yeah. So okay. It's 100 milliliters at 6.7%. So it's like 7 milliliters of alcohol, if that makes sense, yeah, math-wise. I, I, I yeah, I usually do a lot of metric calculations. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good, yeah. The when I go to the Philippines, they, everything's the metric. I'm like, okay, what, what, like how many miles Yeah, is how that? many meters is that? Yeah, it's I, great. Well, yeah. the funny, well, meters is easy because <laughs> it's roughly, I mean, it's kind of like a yard. Kind of like a yard, But yeah. not. Yeah. It's when we get into like liters. Yeah, liters, like, liters are tough. They're like, yeah. yeah, it's like leaders converting to like, ounces, uh, converting no to whatever. Idea. What are we talking about? Here? Yeah, it's it's like, it's uh, it can be interesting. So, it, you know, everyone's always said that growing up that the metric system was so much easier. Um, I yeah, I, I think have, we tried to convert to it at one point. I, that I, didn't work I, well. Yeah, I just have not really found that to be the case. <laughs> like, I find it to be a lot more confusing than what I grew up knowing. Okay, so here we are. 
nine states of distribution, three different flavors in play. You got a great founding team going on. You have, you, you, you have investors involved. Um, it sounds like you've got some distribution. So is the play to like grow within your existing markets or do you grow by getting this into 50 states? You, you add markets, probably not 50. I mean, we really look at population centers. We also look at kind of, you know, if we were able to proof of concept this in the Midwest where we do have pretty hard winners, uh, and I think even the year that we launched, we actually had a pretty hard winter. It was like one of those where you're kind of like, okay, guys, we're probably not going to be selling a lot of snow pops during the blizzard. You know, yeah. that's, that's understandable. Um, you know, growing into warmer states, uh, you know, I think the, the big three population centers. So for us, that's Texas, Florida, California. I mean, you know, it's 100 million people between the three almost. So, uh, you know, looking looking at that growth into the south, the southeast, are, and the California. Are you in any of those states right now? We're not. We're, okay. we're really, really close in Texas, and we'll be in Florida by the, the beginning of next year. California might be a little bit trickier, but we've, we've got conversations going. Um, Why is California tricky? Because uh, Is it because they're a pain in the ass uh, about uh, everything? <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to go on record saying that? But yeah, I mean, are, I yeah. said they, it. They, they, they they are, are, yeah. I'll tell you what, you yeah. can nod your head or shake your head. And if you're listening, you can see Andy's answer by going to our YouTube there, channel. There you go, yes, you can see so he doesn't have to be on, on record, the, on the but record, you can complaining see what about he had California. To say. You can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you're listening, this this the recording of this will be on the Startup Hustle YouTube yeah. channel. That's that's uh, that's that's not incredibly old but people are definitely paying attention we get the visuals as well that a way. little bit so. i think the thing that really kind of draws the viewership down is our faces that's probably it yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can i can take yeah. my half of that yeah blame. i'm working on some kind of algorithm or like something that will just make <laughs> just, me you see these like programs that oh, yeah. you know make the they're like the fake news kind of things i like, feel like you guys and, could develop one of those so, so yeah maybe yeah i feel like that is a, absolutely <laughs> the best use yeah. of our tech of our tech resources it's so yeah. Totally, totally, yeah. Yeah. No, it's one of those things. I mean, if you think about it, you know, our most strategic relationships are the, the distributorships within each of the states. Right. So we have effectively one customer. I, I, you know, you care about it. It's a B two C business. You want to support it with marketing. You want to have a cool brand. You want to have something that pops on the shelf. But at the end, you have to have the right team, the right group distributing and pushing it in the state, and actually being able to get it out there to the right channels. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, that's, you know, that's big channels like, you know, 7-Elevens or Costco's or places like that that, you know, isn't just one person buying it from you. It's pallets and pallets and pallets and pallets of the product. When, when people buy these at those sto at the stores, you mentioned like, I mean, are you have to sell these frozen, right? Or sometimes uh, no, not? No, I, I, uh, I didn't want If I'm popping in and I want to buy some of that stuff, yeah, like, if, yeah, I mean, that would be, that is a little bit of a barrier because. It is a little bit. Um, so you know, we, I, go to, I go to Costco and I buy the big box of the freeze pops. And, yeah. and then my next biggest problem is waiting for them to freeze. Yeah, patience. I, it's not my strong suit. <laughs> That's not surprising. Now, does, some, <laughs> does, some, does some places sell them they frozen? Do. Yeah, we've, we've even, I mean, we've even pushed, uh, you know, partnered with folks on freezers and different sure. things like that. I, I mean, I didn't want it where it had to be frozen, i.e. that it would actually right. like spoil because uh, then we'd be in the milk business and that's not a business I want to be in. Sure. Uh, you don't so can you freeze them on freeze them? Is that, totally. Okay. Yeah. Some things don't do so well with yeah, that. Yeah. So two years shelf stable, uh, doesn't have to be frozen, doesn't ship frozen. So that way we don't have to have refrigerated trucks driving all around the country, you know, with this stuff, which is prohibitively expensive for yeah, this type no of business. Doubt. I mean, you know, there are guys who do it. There are guys who ship them in dry ice and it's, you know, $10 a popsicle. And you're just kind of like, yeah. uh, cool. Like, thanks well, for your you, niche When brands. you look at <laughs> some, like, have you ever seen the movie, The Founder? Yeah. So, you know, the one McDonald's, one of their biggest yeah, problems. milkshake, it, right? Yeah. Well, it was the freezers. <laughs> yep. The freezers in the restaurants. You don't think about that. Like, how could your freezer make you go out of business? Well, like, I mean, yeah, in know. those cases, they had a lot of stuff in it. It was driving the electric bill high and just, I mean, yeah, it doesn't have, sound you know, like that's what would would bring you down, but it was a, a big deal. It's a big so, deal, yeah. And then a lot, and you know, so my family was in the ice cream business mm -hmm. forever. Yeah, like I mean, talking like eighty years. Yeah, and uh, it sold the business here in Kansas City in the mid '60s. Now, yep. uh, you know, if ice cream melts, you can't refreeze it. Yeah, it's just not the same. It turns it gets dairy. icy and it's just kind of gross. It's kind of weird. So yeah. we avoid that, dairy. That present yeah, and that presents a whole different set of set of issues because your spoilage can. If you've ever worked at a grocery store or something, invariably you were there and someone left something somewhere. And it's done. Yeah, you're pitching yeah, it. Yeah, and it's, that's it's expensive, lost. though. That's yeah, expensive. Okay, yeah. so so seeking – well, but 
California was a challenge because of the regulations? Uh, no, to a degree as well. I mean, I, I think when we talk about the, that level of distributorship, uh, once you pick one in certain states, uh, you're, you're with them. I mean, you're, you're in business with them in the sense that, like, that's the, the sole and exclusive person who gets to distribute your product. So, so you got to pick a winner. You got to pick a winner. And uh, the way I evaluate it, I was going to say, you know, the Goldilocks measurement for me on distributors is they need to be big enough to have statewide coverage, but they also need to be small enough that they actually care about my business. Yeah, so, you that's know, probably tough. Yeah. It's, Especially it's, in it's California. California. It's a mid-tier type distributor, and what we've been able to do is kind of take uh, just some of the learnings from picking really great distributorships in places like Kansas and Missouri and Oklahoma, and then turn that into, okay, what are distributorships that are like these in these other states that are How larger? How do you find them? Uh, you know, th there's a whole network of, of people who are in the business and in the I industry. I mean, there are brokers and vendors that are kind of there like are, wanting to middle that relationship There are a definitely bit. brokers or, or kind of, you know, guys who are looking to kind of put those relationships together. We we often find the best distributors through our current distributors. You know, I mean, yeah. I'll always, always go and once we kind of have something rocking and rolling with a distributor at a state, I'll say, okay, who do you know who's bordering states with you? that it's not competitive. You know, if you're in Missouri, who do you have in Arkansas? Who do, who do you work sure. with? Who do you like down there? Well, I'll give you, you know? an example. So we own part of Mixtape the Game, uh -huh. which you may or may not have heard us play. And right now it, it, we're building an app for this that'll come out really soon. Um, I was just playing the test version of it. But the card game, um, you know, we sold 50,000 of these. Yeah in the fourth quarter of 2018. But the, the, think about that, that's a lot. That's a lot. And then uh, the majority of them went to Target. Yeah. Now, we didn't print those in ourselves and deliver them to Target. This yep. is the, the, the card game version of this is, uh, is licensed to a company called Breaking Games. Yep. And the reason I ask about the brokership is because they have licenses for a whole bunch of games. Mm -hmm. So they're out there beating the bushes and doing the, they're fighting the battles to make that, because it's yeah. hard to get in Target. It is, yeah. You know, and like it's you, I mean, the same thing for anything, like whether it's Snow yeah. Pops or Mixtape the Game or who knows, anything. And so, you know, we, we collect a royalty on that. Yeah. So it's a little different, but, you know, without that relationship, and thank you, Breaking Games, because they're the ones that really champion that. Yeah, that they whole, it. and now they take some chances with that too, because yeah. they take on the license, and they got you know you got to have these things to sell them. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the case of Snow Pops, is that is that a challenge? Because what's the what's the drink that is it what something Claw White Claw White Claw. So yeah. okay, so White Claw is really popular right now, blowing up, yeah. But they're running out of it. Have yep. you seen those articles? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. I guess that's there. Wor there are worse problems to have. There are, but I mean, if you think about it from an inventory point of view, not having the product is not just as bad as not as having right. too much of the product. Well, right? and, so. well, it, it is, unless the wor and the unless the press is hyping you up that, as there, being yeah, there's no more, so. Yeah. In that case, like yeah. now, I used to be a ticket broker, so I have a, a very firm grasp. Scarcity is a good on thing. On scarcity, <laughs> yes, and hype and hype. So you yeah. know, uh, and if you and. So I, I worked in the music industry for a while, and one of the things that an agent will tell you is to play venues that are smaller yeah. than you can fill because you want to leave some people out on the street. Yep. Why? Um, because if you don't and everyone thinks they can just walk up to the the box office on the day of the show and buy a ticket, they don't buy them early. Yeah. And then if it rains or something happens, you just don't sell as much stuff. You try to create that urgency to go buy it now. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you because of those articles and that publicity, some, when people went to go buy that, if they found it, they didn't just grab a six pack. They're like, oh, this is probably going to run out. Probably like load up the cart. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's like Pape's chicken sandwich. You know, that yeah. was that whole thing was. What hilarious. was up with that? I don't so. even know the story with that. Did they try a chicken sandwich? They did a chicken sandwich. So, wait, Popeyes didn't have a chicken sandwich no, until I recently? Think they just had like chicken, like buckets of chicken. How the fuck so, does that happen? I'm not sure. So then so, they decided to make it's one? It's been a few years since I've been to a Popeye's. I know, I haven't either. I saw <laughs> these things, but so they decided to I'm make I'm one. More of a, I'm more of a Chick-fil-A man myself. So, it, it, yeah. Open on Sunday. I'm, I don't, I, I have a hard time, like, th they literally had a corporate meeting a few years ago about how to boost sales. How about you open on Sunday? I, I, I agree. I always crave it on Sunday, too. It always is the worst. It's because so. you can't have it. Pretty so much, yeah. so well so Popeyes decided to make a chicken sandwich and then no one and then it sold out or was it no good or like what was it? It was, was supposedly a, really good. 
but then it sold out in a lot of different places. And so then there was this whole thing where people were just going crazy to go find it. Kentucky and, uh, Fried Chicken yeah. in a few states, like within the last year, they had a chicken supply issue and the, they yeah. like ran out of yeah. chicken. So, someone needs to make a documentary. It's like, we didn't know we were in a chicken war, but apparently we are. Yes. But are we? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All I the watched chicken a brands documentary going about out. chickens and it didn't make me want to eat chickens, I'll tell you that. I much. would agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, what was that called? It's on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch it if you really like chicken. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so with your supply, is that a challenge to kind of measure like yeah. what what people are going to make, what they're going to want? And yeah, it's it's inventory management, right? So any any time that you have a physical product that has a lead time, uh, you know the the challenge is you know making sure that you have enough capitalization to be able to produce sufficient product. But you don't want a million dollars worth of product sitting in a warehouse for six months or a year. So uh, that's always a challenge. So I think a lot of it is just kind of trying to project as best we can how much we're going to sell and then always be ahead of it, right? But not ahead of it by a million units where you have just all those dollars tied up. So it, it really is, you know, management of, of, of being able to project outward, being able to anticipate growth. And there are times that we will launch or not launch a state based on how much inventory we have. So is that what happened with White Claw? They just like, it was popular and they didn't make White enough Claw, of it in I mean, advance or like, did they run out of something? Or White Claw has like, done like well over couple hundred million dollars in sales this year. I don't think they kind of possibly anticipated they're going to sell that much. Unless so, they did it on yeah. purpose. I mean, in some ways. But I mean, so White Claw and Truly are both kind of the, the carbonated, you know, water with alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, fortifying it. In both cases, they actually created like a run where there was a shortage of aluminum cans for about six months. Like last year, I had a supplier who was... Of their aluminum, aluminum cans or just in general? Just in general. They actually made a aluminum run on aluminum. Aluminum is the third most <laughs> available uh, element on the planet. Yeah, yeah I don't think we ran out of aluminum. I think we just ran out of specifically cans. aluminum cans for a period of time because they had locked up the supply you know what so. are you gonna do <laughs> but yeah it's it's interesting because it is a we're, we're that drunk thing. as a country <laughs> yes. that literally people yes. could not the buy aluminum parties. cans because we yeah. were drinking so much white claw so much so much white claw yeah I, I, but that's it, not a problem for you because your product comes in a in a in a, in a pouch it does it does but yeah. you know the same way i mean last summer i i totally admit like we had i had an issue on the distribution side we were bringing over not on the distribution side on the manufacturing side we were bringing over the material that made the the tube or the pouch, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, uh, from Asia, and um, we got it. We got an order in, and you know, it was cut wrong or whatever else kind Not of deal. Good. And then we're scrambling to like be like, oh, cool, yeah, they'll they'll get you some more, but it might take a few months. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, well, that's that, a problem. That's yeah. awesome. That'll be December then. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah. Uh, I think you know supply chains are always interesting because you don't control them all. You don't want to own your supply chain, but yeah. you want to have you know the ability to make sure that you can always deliver products. Some businesses do want to own their supply chain though. I, I yeah. mentioned I worked in the music industry, so I worked for Roland. Uh -huh. uh, they make like five billion dollars a year of musical instruments they actually do want to own their supply chain because so much of the um, in the case where you would some like the electronics and musical instruments like yeah. one little component can throw off the entire yep. rest of the prod product so they actually make every part that they have which makes sense because yeah. then they don't they aren't at the mercy of you know you don't know what's going to break in four years yep. or whatever so they have that they have their ability to control their supply chain so they're never at the mercy of like here's one vendor that only makes one parts and they're like ha 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 yeah. ha you know well, jack up the price and or or quit making it yeah and now you can't and now you're two years into the life cycle of a product yep. and you can't support it because someone quit making a chip yeah or something dumb. Well, and in the beverage industry, the larger players, the Diageo's and Bacardi's and Anheuser-Busch, I mean, they, they obviously control their supply yeah, chain. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I, I, I think when you're starting out, though, and you're doing a beverage brand, you kind of have to pick a lane. And does it make sense to pull a few million dollars into a supply chain and take it away from sales and marketing yeah, when you don't not. know the brand? Yeah. You don't know if the I mean, brand's going to work or not. Yeah, if it's a smaller, I mean, it's a smaller you got to establish yeah. the brand, you know, and that's where the money goes. So what's your favorite flavor? Uh, I really like the mango. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, the, I love them all equally. No, <laughs> I don't have it's to say like that. Right? Your parents, I like do, the mango. Do you have brothers or sisters? I do. Did yes. your parents tell you that they love you equally? I, I think that's like the talking point of all parents. It's isn't like it? the first so. lie that all 
that, it is. that we're it is. taught to believe. I completely agree. It's completely yeah. a lie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my sister's like a way better kid than I ever yeah, was. Yeah, you don't or deserve to be loved be. as much as she No, is I mean, I, I, and I concede. <laughs> I mean, I concede like, like in a landslide. Yep election like the guy that you five, five that. minutes after voting starts like yeah <laughs> we don't even need to count i'm not gonna waste your time, so. it's it's fine we can i mean it's understandable i mean i probably wouldn't uh, I, when i found out uh also when i found out my wife and i were having a daughter mm-hmm. i wanted to name her payback <laughs> my wife was not into that yeah i feel so. like i would have if i if i had my own frozen line like i would probably either be really successful or an abysmal failure because I would have like yellow snow. There we go. Like be, there we go. and like in a product in, idea. Like, but it, <laughs> but here's the thing: is like in some ways that might actually be like a genius product. It could be clever or it could be too it clever could, by half. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> then it could also be like, well, maybe not. Yeah, you it's, know, it's, like, uh, I could see a lot of people buying yellow snow. Yeah, like, once. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> once. I mean, I also was the guy that would also bring you a five pack yep yeah yeah because it's yeah delivery charge sometimes a four pack (laughs) depends (laughs) how far away you lived yeah okay so anyway if you want to check out some of the pictures from the studio grab a nice little selfie because you know we're looking good in here oh yeah check out at startup hustle podcast where uh, this whole episode uh it's it's video it's on video uh Lego Voltron, once again, had nothing to say. Nothing to say. No contribution. This dude is, seriously, he needs to, and, oh, Johnny's going to come take pictures of us now. He almost yeah. forgot. He almost, it's his job. To, oh, you know what it awesome. is, 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 is the person who really does their job is, is on vacation this week. There we go. So. There we go. Johnny also. Voltron. Not, Johnny also not drunk on snow pops. Nope. Yeah. No one is. So, it's before, it's before lunch. Dude, so. there, there's no, I had apple there's pie no for breakfast today. <laughs> I had apple <laughs> pie with whipped cream on it for breakfast today. So, I yes. would have probably, Just, yeah. Snow pops becomes a health yeah, and food then, for you. And then this is funny too. So I realized that um, for whatever reason, uh, many people were asking me a lot of stupid questions today. Okay. So uh, actually right now on my Facebook page, I've encouraged, I said, hey, if you have any stupid questions you'd like to ask me, let's get them out of the way right now. There you go. I will answer all of them and I will, that way I can have smooth sailing. So immediately they started pouring in. I was, <laughs> I was asked, when was the last time you listened to a Nickelback song in its entirety? Ugh, insulting. I did, you know, I'll, I'll be playful. I said that I listened to Photograph three times on the way to work today. Awesome. Um, I was also asked if I will hang a Justin Bieber Christmas ornament on my tree this year, which I will, because I have one. Okay. He's an you angel. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. Not the direction I, I, I thought this would go, but that's cool. The apple, the <laughs> apple pie. I mean, I'm saying it was it was open. So if you want to check out Snow Pops, they're all around. You know, you can go to snowpops.co. Does that does do you have a list of where they're distributed there? Yeah, or? we do. We do at the state level. We don't always have it broken down to the actual individual retailer, but if they shoot us a note and kind of let us know what area town they're in or what area of whatever town they're in, because uh, again, it's in nine states. Um, you know, we usually can kind of give them some feedback around, hey, try this or try that. And, and, and if states, they don't sell snow pops where you go to buy your hooch, tell them. Tell them. Tell, tell them all about it. They want snow pops. Yeah, and they it's want available. Them now. It's, it's growing. So They want them now. Again, the idea is it's a, it's a national brand. It's out there. So, well, thank you for being our first adult beverage popsicle and cocktail popsicle participant. Here I'm on, very happy here on the to. Hustle. Thanks for the time. Um, and a little recap here, you know, like uh, we like to <laughs> I track acronyms, RTD, ready to drink. Ready to drink. Which, I mean, I could, if someone said, where are you at right now? I'd say, I'm RTD, baby. I'm ready to drink. <laughs> um, funny story with that. I was ta- I, when I go to visit our staff in Cebu, so we got 170 employees yeah. there. We, do a, we always do a town hall. Yep. So we put a box at the front desk and we let them, and we encourage them to ask any question. Nice. And I kind of pull the questions out. So every now and then you get a funny one. I pulled one out. I'm talking to like, so I do two of these. We do a morning one and an after one, noon one. This is the full one. I've got at least 130 people there. Pull a question out. It says, yeah. hello, Matt. Do you drink? Want to get wasted? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, I, I always answered the questions very transparently. Yeah, so I said, I don't drink often, but when I do, I make it count. It's been a long week, so probably. Yeah. But I never found out who submitted the question. Anonymous. So. I know. It, well, they're all anonymous. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the funny thing is, is after you bring us back some snow pops. Oh, yeah. We'll be able to make that happen. Absolutely, so, man. Well, anyway, I'll man. I'll give you th- something to th- take over to the Philippines with you. So. Uh, yeah, they love it when you bring alcohol. 
Yeah, yeah. Totally. And actually, you know what? It probably wouldn't be that hard because going through the customs in the Philippines means walking past, past a guy with a big smile that's just waving. Yes. Just come on. Yeah. They, I feel like money. they have probably bigger problems to deal with than whatever Possibly. I could whatever I could deliver. Yeah. We have yeah. interesting visas there too. We've created so many jobs there. We qualified for like it, Are you a citizen? No, <laughs> well, no, not technically, but we are we have special investor visas, uh, which yeah. means we can go there and never have to leave. So we might as well be. We're not technically May citizens, as well. but yeah. as long as the business is is alive. Yeah, as long as you make payroll, they let you stay. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. So, well, once again, go to snowpops.co, go to Instagram, check out Snowpops. If you want to check us out uh, at Startup Hustle Podcast, we'll post some pictures from the show. If you want to check out the other businesses that Matt Watson and I own, you go to stackify.com, gigabook.com, and hey, check out fullscale.io. Uh, make sure to you like, review, or subscribe. Looking forward to seeing you next time.